Not Tell that I me. need it, because I've already taken care of a lot of stuff. Gore! You've got it. And from afar, nothing but a wet marble with a few flecks of moss. A place devoid of the usual thick space traffic associated with imperial worlds. So desolate that it's often used in manner of speech to indicate its forgotten nature. Supposedly efforts have been made to spruce it up, but results have yet to be seen. In fact, supposedly, one of the guys who was sent to spruce the place up already got recalled. So that's nice. You are, in fact, called by his replacement. It's an old friend of yours. Let me pull up his name, because his name is kind of weird. It's not William, it's Williard, if I recall correctly. <laughs> I always like characters where, uh... Yep, there he is. His name was Willard Vorstaden. A relatively low-ranking noble. An ex-military man. Good with a gun, not so good with organizational skills. Let's put it like that. You probably saw him in a good few fights, maybe impressed him with your bravery. I don't know what you did with him. But he liked you enough and trusted you enough to invite you over to come and help him out with the situation. Because he's a little bit... He, he sounded like he's a bit out of his element here. A little bit. Or maybe he just wants someone to talk to. The large station that orbits scores as basic as it gets. Just a lump of metal tubes and blocks. The usual prefabricated parts that the Imperium uses for their internal uh, starports. Airlocks have been delineated, but are also Spartan. You recall that just a few jumps back, they were swarming with repair drones and people in vac suits. Without any windows, windows to the interior, large, like, vista windows. There are those small little, I want to look at a star windows. The only sign of life is the space to surface craft that ferry cargo and passengers between the starport and the downport, of which you see exactly one, and it just seems to be arriving. The ship's intercom. I don't know what ship you're on, but someone paid for this passage, and the little... It politely announces that the low berth lottery is going to commence after docking, and all participants are requested to stay on station until it's completed. As in participants, if you... Part so... Fun thing about this world is some people go by low birth, and that means that you could put in a big old ice cube machine and get turned into a popsicle. The process is not very survivable, so a lot of people are like, hey, let's have a lottery as to how many people survive the procedure. And if you win, you get all the money. It's yeah. morbid, but it's a consequence of the circumstances. Terrifying. Absolutely terrifying. Uh, the, the steward over the intercom doesn't have a lot to say about the planet. It's like, it's, if you know about Earth, if you know about, like, proper terraforming planets, well, congratulations. It's another one of those. It's got a lot of water. Got gra green grass. Oh, man, I wish I wasn't here right now. <laughs> Instead, he fixates a lot more on, like, the refurbishments of the starport. About, how, oh, well, they're, they're planning to refurbish it as part of our finalization effort. They're going to install blah, blah. Oh, man. Ugh. Worthy of the Imperium, the new pot contains a proper fuel refinery, and officially recognizing birthing passage you may have. So if you're on a layover, don't hesitate to cash in those high berths. Beep beep. He calls out. <laughs> beep beep. Again. Docking goes as smooth as it can for a C-class structure. Argus, you are well familiar with uh, stations like this. C-class structures right. tend to have that... Uh... So with A-class and B-class, buttery smooth. C-class, you can feel the, the, the airlock clamps just creak into place until it jolts right where it needs to be. Of course, since spaceships are pretty large and heavy... And inertia is a thing. It's not a very fun process for people who aren't expecting it. <laughs> so you're probably True. the only person who stays up straight as everyone else just goes, whoa, for a moment. Yeah, I was yeah, part of the Navy. Magnetic <laughs> boots. I was part of the Navy. I know how this stuff works. You probably have experience magnetic. with it then. Indeed. When the airlocks open up, all you see in front of you is the usual rows of lights, delineations to here's the hotel, here's a bar, here's a place you can just sit. Here, Throw your trash here, please. Just one plastic chair in the middle of nowhere. Gen so genuine plastic here. chairs, yes. <laughs> Authentic <laughs> Imperium plastic chairs. They go for a good price on eBay. Let me, okay, eBay. can I interject real fast and say that recently the Dutch people had an election and a bunch of people have been selling the pencils from that election because they got to keep them because of Corona. <laughs> it's, <laughs> it's fucking hilarious. <laughs> they sold them for hundreds of euros. What the fuck? They're pencils. So you could, so you could say that the Dutch are pencil pushers. Da -da 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 -da. <laughs> Unfortunately, the second you exit, the station intercom overlaps with the ship intercom, so you hear two voices for a moment talking about different things. Mm -hmm. The starport, however, seems to say that all starport passengers, please note that the downport puzzle port shuttle has finished this last run for the day. In ten hours, it will have completed maintenance and flights will resume. Please remember to reschedule your flight. Prior arrangements are not completed. Did and are non-transferable. 
You are left on the station. You still need to get to the planet. Yes, we'll have to book it for tomorrow. <laughs> Are there any actual, like, amenities where we could stay for the night? Or is it basically, you just fuck around for a day? Uh, most Imperium starports, as I mentioned, have the standardized, here are lines for basic amenities. So there is one that goes to a dining area or a hotel that's uh, constructed on top of it. Makes sense. I would like to, first and foremost, for myself at least, go and book a room. Because we are we the only arrivals on this uh, trip, by the way. A few people seem to go along with you, and a couple of those cryo sleep uh, canisters huh. get rolled out. But All who right, knows where those enough. guys are well, going? It's not really crowded, but still, I would like to reserve the spot for myself to sleep in advance, so I don't have to sleep in the trash again. Again. All right. Anyone else want to do anything? So that I know how to split. Well, yep. When I was working on a G20 conference, uh, a couple of dudes from Kenya actually arrived without reservations, so we had to bust them for four hours across the city until we found a little tiny hotel in the ass end of the, you know, of the city, just so they could stay for the night. So okay. now I'm definitely afraid of not making reservations in advance. That's one way to... Yeah, but by the way, Disney. they arrived in, like, Hawaiian shorts and everything completely inappropriate oh. for the occasion and everything. <laughs> and everybody was basically dismissing them because it's like, oh, it's just a bunch of, you know, two, two dumbasses from Africa or something. But um, the bus driver and I said, look, we didn't want to sit here. It's boring. Let's just bust them around for a little bit. And then they bought both of us coffee at the end of the conference because they showed up in expensive suits and everything. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's how it be. Don't, don't judge a book by its cover. Anyway, uh, just the rooms. For us all, I assume, since we're all in the same no, group. I was asking what yeah. everyone else was doing, and Dizzy was saying something. Yes. Well, yeah. I was just going to say I was going to go with Arthur and help sort out the rooms, I guess. Make sure I don't miss mm -hmm. out. Yeah, same. Oh, Marvelous. Why wouldn't we have a good place to sleep? <sighs> Making your way over to... So, are you familiar with coffin hotels? Yes. yes. <laughs> then this is what you get. The the, the oh. it's a it's standard prefab. The Imperium is like trade will eventually build a good hotel if there is need for one. So what you get are space station spaces at a premium. You might think we're in space, we can build anything. It's you still have to build like expensive life support graded sections for the space station. So it's really expensive to get more space in space somehow. Well, it's expensive to get human space. If only you flashbacks weren't so dependent on this thing called oxygen. <laughs> I know. It's, it's a if character only, flaw. If we only you better. could all just live in vac suits for the rest of your life, like some alien species are more than willing to do. Like the dolphins are willing to do. I still can't believe that's part of the lore. What the f... <laughs> anyway, as I mentioned, there it's, it's a coffin hotel. The best you can get is the ones that are closer to where the life support, or like the, the, the ventilation shafts are, where, you know, the air is the freshest from the recyclers. Not that it's bad, but, you know, yeah. it's a little stale. Things matter. The attendant is a new level of boredom in terms of how far he has sunk into his hand. Like, half of his face seems to have vanished in a hand that has more support to it than any part of his facial structure at this moment does. He barely even looks up at you. Like, you see his eye maybe twitch your direction when you get close? Hello. We would like to book... A... How many of us are here? Six. Uh, five. Five. Five, yeah. would like to book five pods for the night. Or so... the day. Jesus. What? What is a... Currently, the time, local time, I assume it's synced to, like, the planet. What part or of the planet? Or does it run on... Hmm? What part Chicken? of the planet? Oh, well, no. I mean, that makes sense. <laughs> but usually, if it's only one colony on the planet, that it's synced to one specific time zone. Yeah, it, these things are usually synced to the to the downport, you know, the place where you go when you go from the space station. Yeah. Um, as mentioned, it seems to be night down there, which is probably why the, the last flight just came in. Yes, that makes sense. So when you say this, the the thing you get out of him is this, like, sorry, sorry, you can't book flights to other stations. For me. Please go to Harbor Mass for the required flight. <laughs> I'll go and buy him coffee. 
In case you didn't get any of that, that's intentional. That's fine. I'm going to go and buy him a coffee. I'm going to say, hey, dude, sorry to bother. Could you please help us with the rooms for the night? Well, you know, you can get out of the station real fast. You just try to shift out here. I heard it's not too expensive. They take your passes nowadays. Can I try to decipher this? He He's clearly saying okay. that we can get out of the station quick. I think there's also a harbor master mention in there. Okay, can you roll me some intellect and see what happens? Oh, Difficulty gosh. six. Yes. Eleven. Jesus. <laughs> you didn't need to blow him out of the water, good sir. You, um, you speak this dude's he language. He seems to be misunderstanding what you're trying to do here. He's talking about the fact that... He's saying, like, you can get off the station faster if you just charter a ship. He doesn't seem to understand that you're here to go with a downport shuttle. And it's like, hey, just leave the station. Don't stay here. It's bad. Well, I'm a big whiny baby. Well, in that case, I'm going to wait until he has his coffee, and then I'm going to repeat all the same thing, but with extra information. It's like, hey, we need the downport shuttle. It has left for the day. We need to stay somewhere for 10 hours until it comes back. Once he had his coffee, you can recognize that this is, in fact, a human being of some description. In his <laughs> teen years. Oh, child. He was not, in fact, a blubber monster. Uh, that's... Understandable. Oh, really? Someone got... You know, lots of people who came down to Gore didn't have to stay here. They had their own big ship, and they came with their little ship crafts to go down to the planet. You're not one of those nobles, are you? Not that I know of, no. No. <laughs> I would very much appreciate nobles coming by, because then maybe they would actually build a proper hotel instead of me having to sleep in one of the empty pot. Point is, um... Sure, we could, we could take care of that. Uh, don't worry about it. <laughs> I like twitches a bit as he drinks the coffee, and mm -hmm. you're not quite sure how much coffee he drinks, but he responds powerfully to it. Let's put it like that. <laughs> He's going to be in a sugar rush for a couple hours. <laughs> probably, very probably. I've actually never thought about how much it costs to actually stay in a place, but there's probably information on because there's a whole section on trade and operations. Mm -hmm. Just the two, God damn it! Why is that? S yes. Well, at least it's not subsistence. You can make it if you in. Da, ba, 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 ba. Now, Safi, you did mention that we would have to procure weapons after the you can uh, character creation. You, no, you can buy things, but you can only spend up to 2,000 credits beforehand. Up to 2,000, yeah, that's what I'm accounting for. Yeah. I mean, you're not exactly right. in the most exciting place in the world, so availability might be a bit of a problem. But, you know, when has that ever stopped anyone? Yes. There's exactly something that I'm going to pick. A typical meal costs 5 to 50 credits. Eating in, mm -hmm. a, in a fast food is 2 to 3. A fine meal to travelers, 8 hostel, which you can dev membership for is 20. Sub a a sybaratic... That's a word I've never seen before. Let's see. Sybaratic. It's fond of sensuous luxury or pleasure. Ooh, that's a great way to describe a feast. For a dozen courses and entertainment is 500 or more. Accommodation and a night in a cheap hotel is 10 credits. So yeah, this is like 10 a pop. Good hotel is 5 to 50. Luxuries are 100 or more per night. You were trying to acquire weapons and ar items, I heard. Sure. What are you trying to get? Argus? Uh, room for the night. Or are you? do you mean the no, weapons? No, no, no. Room for the night is, is like cheap. You can take care of that. You got a person with 100,000 yeah. credits. You take care of it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. That's what I'm looking for right now. If we're talking it. about the weapons, I was looking for a shotgun. Because that's just a staple. Okay, shotgun you can easily acquire on station. Pay the standard price and all. Yes. Um, all right, when I'm you put this on the note. When you go to... So the way this works is that there's a dude who runs a warehouse who has... Mm -hmm. He's a broker. He has hundreds of thousands of clients, or who knows how many clients. And they all are like, I have this stuff. I don't want to hold on to this stuff because I need to pick up stuff on the planet. Hold on to it. Sell it if you can. And so he does. And he gets a cut. He is. He, normally, these are slick back guys who have their hairs constantly in the finest do they can purchase. This guy is just, eh. He's like, eh. No one important comes here. Anyone with a fancy capital ship is just gonna go with a small craft to the surface. So I'm like, mm, I don't have to look fancy. So he also takes a moment. Normally, they're a bit faster than this, but you do acquire your fine shotgun. He also politely reminds you that um, you probably can't get past starport security unless you're a wink, wink, nudge, nudge, uh, persistent individual. Specify. All I mean, levels too high. Bribe. 
No, I mean, there's many ways to get past. I mean, legally, I can't tell you anything, but, you know, you could hide it, put it in a special bag, have some dude smuggle it across, throw it over the fans, or, you know, just yeah, bribe an official. special bags, too. I could bribe an official, or plenty of corrupt people down there. Hmm. Special <clears throat> bag like that. Oh, my, you want me to give you some... Mmm. <laughs> He's like, well, why would I own one of those? <laughs> and then he almost immediately shows you some one such item. <laughs> this is just a fine carrying bag, sir. It's not a bag that hides from scanning equipment. <sighs> Man, tool sets are expensive. All right. So you're going to buy that from him? Oh my. Does this person have another one that I could purchase? Uh, this thing is big enough to fit, like... A shotgun and Bunch. maybe something else of comparable size, but it's a bit of a squeeze, and they might draw <laughs> might draw attention to it at that point. Well, I have a big game rifle. <laughs> oh boy, <laughs> this is a mess. You can probably take it apart. Yeah. I'll okay. Prefer. Okay. He has something for it, and it looks at first you might go, "Oh, that's to hold tent poles, right?" And he zips it open, <laughs> and inside is this. So, you know, if you've ever seen one, it's one of those foam cutout versions of a gun. You know, it would be like, this is what a gun looks like. This is what the gun looks like in this particular space. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It takes yeah, it like a foam version of a long rifle. <laughs> Couldn't find this if they tried. And it looks oh. like a tent. Of course, unlike that fine duffel bag. Okay, I just want to point out that the Central Supply Catalog does, in fact, offer prices for an alien cos cosplay kit. Which is everything we need it. Oh my! That's amazing. I can't believe furries do are catered to in this. How dare they? Do we already have gun, or do we have to buy them specifically? Some of us started with guns. S some of them started with guns. At character creation, you could spend two thousand on like equipment and crap. I knew we forgot mm -hmm. something. Tuffy, how is ammunition getting trucked? Uh, for the most part, I don't really care too much, unless. We get into a tight spot, but for the most, yeah, ammunition is tracked to an extent, but we're not going to worry too much about that. Fair enough. If you can smuggle your weapons with you, you can probably smuggle the ammo you need. You're not going to get into Fair that enough. many fights. Bat bat. That oh. makes sense. Okay, cool, yo. Sphere of Solace. Man, there's some cool is stuff here. A... Sonic Sweat and Stain <laughs> Remover. <laughs> the stuff they sell is great. Uh. Portable mas washing machine? Anyway, the, 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 the big duffel bag is... Man, that's pretty expensive. It's like 500 credits, but the tentpole one, because, you know, you're basically, you can smuggle a broadsword in that, is uh, 750. Yeah, I can pay that. At that point, however, he does go like, listen, you gotta go, because it's getting a little too hot like this, and you're, like, not even sure what he's talking about. There's no one around. It's a small station, and somehow there's nobody here. Fair enough. There's probably security cameras. Probably. Who knows if anyone's actually watching those. Did you know, by the way, that people will sell you cameras that just flicker their lights every once in a while so people think that they're on? It's great. Yeah, it's cheaper, too. I, I, I love how people compare them to, like, the, fr the frogs and snakes that look like other frogs and snakes. The hijack. Yeah. It's great. I love it. As you make your way along after your fine purchase, suddenly the station has this... Um... Argus, and probably also... Oh, actually, let me just call you Arthur and Arya. You're familiar enough with docking procedures to know instantly that this is a... Someone didn't dock their ship good. And this is the part where some emergency crew would probably have to roll out to make sure that everything works. Hmm. I assume there is no emergency crew, though. There probably isn't. I'll go take a look, just in case. I didn't fly to the ass end of the universe to die on the first day. Before we go That's on, true. you can roll me a mechanic roll using int or edge, int, you know, quick, quick guesses. Int. Yes. So, Anyone who has a mechanic yeah. and a good intelligence roll can give it a got, a go. Okay. Mechanic. Oh. Mechanic and intelligence. Or, or pilot spacecraft, I guess, makes sense. Because this is a spacecraft that's landing. Let me see which one is better. They're both identical, but I have a better... So uh, Lisa and Arthur are both suddenly acutely aware of something that might be going on. Yeah, we are. Um, yeah, we are. It, it's, it's, a, it's a tougher check than that. It was not an eight, but... So your effect is one. <sighs> the, 
that sound is mm -hmm. a scrape, not a stop. So there's a chance that a ship is about to completely collide with the space station. Mm. Maybe not now, but who knows what's going on and where it's going on. Got to brace myself. Yeah, the I think we're be trying to find like some emergency vac suits or something. The intercom springs to life. Please, please remain calm. We are currently experiencing some minor docking issues. This is of no concern. <laughs> <laughs> the station has sufficient emergency airlocks to shut off the, emer the affected areas if necessary. Please remain calm. Yeah, like the Titanic who, who, who just kind of sliced itself in half. Oh, yeah. You know, that's just how it goes. Yes. I'll, I suppose I can point everybody else who doesn't have a vaccine towards where they there should be. There are stations like this definitely have like the, every once in a while, just like fire mm -hmm. extinguishers and uh, automatic electric defibrillators. There are sections where you can forget those those things you can pull over your head to quickly get some air. And yes. then you can put on the suit. I think that's probably what they would say but on the cases. you must on yourself first, then on your kids. And then put on the pressurized suit. Vacuum won't necessarily kill you, but it's not pleasant. Yes. You're not going to enjoy it. Yeah. Uh, all right. You brace yourself for future impacts. After a minute or so, nothing seems to have happened. But there is suddenly a call over the intercom that politely requests that anyone with any vac suit or engineering experience please report to Airlock 5. <laughs> okay. Sure. All right. <laughs> that go. definitely sounds like us. Yes. The gang heads on over to airlock 5, which looks like all the other airlocks. Again, prefabricated. You could get lost if it wasn't for the excessive amount of lines indicating where to go and numbers plastered all over the place. Yeah. However, a diehard Karen could still pretend to get lost. Oh my god, Sun Guy rubbing his shoulder. <laughs> Argus, how am I supposed to focus on the game when I get memes like this thrown at me? <laughs> <laughs> This is this is the captain of Evergreen. <laughs> oh, no. I hope it's an historian makes a video on that, but it's not as dramatic as the other ship was. He he's just he, he's just high on drugs, and his imaginary son friend is is just telling you, dude, dude, it's chill, it's chill, it's gonna be fine. <laughs> oh man, you at airlock five is. I don't know how many exasperated captains you've seen in your life, but this guy sure is the poster child for exasperated captain. Mm. He He's standing by the airlock, like, slamming his fist, yelling at the guy on the other side. Mm -hmm. I'm going to tap him on the shoulder and indicate that. I, I assume we're both, like, wearing suits. Uh, the captain's the not point. wearing a vac suit. He's just, ye he's just busy Ooh. yelling through the small window. Oh, fair enough. Well, in that case, I don't have to actually do anything. I'll just communicate with him with a voice. Bah. What do you want? That seems to be the problem. Can't you see I'm dealing with incompetent individuals? Yes, but they said anyone with engineering specialty to show up here. And hello, uh, I am here. Well, that's probably my commsman panicking. Great. Didn't think he was such a piss pants. He points through the window. You see that thing out there? That's my ship. I thought they docked. Turns out my pilot's an incompetent idiot. Oh, but Captain, the, the, the M drives aren't functioning properly. He whines at me before crashing this damn thing and breaking the airlock off. The umbilical's gone. Mm. You look like you're wearing an engineer suit. He, he, he's at, through this whole thing, he's like poking you in the chest, of which you feel nothing because this is a thick suit. Because, because it's probably at least 50 extra kilograms of just metal and plastic. <laughs> My so chest is five feet finger, under sir. the air. Don't break your fingers, sir. <laughs> uh, point is, he's blocking most of the comm channels, so I can't even talk to the... He points to the one. That idiot over there who's trying to get the stabilizer cables in place. Do we have someone with actual communications? Can we cut him off? Um, you're going to need someone with comms to help out with that. I or have. Electronics. Have. I have... Yeah, I've got a lot of comms. I have zero electronics, so it's something. 
I'm good at electronics, but not specifically comms. Now, you can help out. Helping in the system is as simple as it gets. When you help Ooh. someone out... Um, and I think that a lot of systems can learn from this. It's a task chain, and task chains are simple. You roll against a difficulty, and the effect, as in the extra amount you roll over the target number, gets added to the next roll. Mm. Which is a pretty cool way of doing things. So yeah, if anyone wants to help, you can. Provide some sure. advice as to how to take care of this. As you poke I've been thinking of actually... I've been thinking of actually trying to remotely pipe look to it because I do have a skill of electronics remote ops and that seems to be appropriate for that. Additionally, there there is a small like scanner panel because C class starports, one of the requirements is that they have a monitoring station so that they can monitor the ship coming in and make sure everything's aligned mm -hmm. and everything. So you have a small phone you can use to call to make small sensor communications between the nearby ship and everything. You couldn't call like, to the other side of the station, but you could call to the ship nearby. And Excellent. it also has a little set of cameras you can use to, to monitor things. So simply put, anyone with some good electronic skills in sensors or comms can help out whoever is out there trying to attach what apparently are, are called stabilizer cables, which... Mm. Yeah. Navy man can tell you are these big semi-flexible cables they use to try and slow and veer the, shi the ship into place using as minimal force as possible. Yeah, I'm good with sensors. I can definitely try and help. All right. Welcome to a task chain. Someone is going to have to go out there and help that guy with the cables because that's a two-man job and there seems to be only one dude out there. Uh, I, I, yeah, I'll go out there. Tom's specialist? Someone needs to get on comms to communicate what the sensors are telling. Oh, wait. And someone needs to man the dang sensors. Oh, wait, I'll stay back and do comms. Yeah, I'll do the mm -hmm. sensors. I'll do All the right. other thing. Whoever's if left can take care of the captain and make sure he doesn't get in the way, because he likes yelling and getting in the way, it seems. <laughs> I'm actually going to pull him away and just ask him thing, trivial things about his ship. Are you sure that Mr. Vaxuit and Mechanic shouldn't be the one outside helping that guy? With the cables. I would love to, but I don't think I actually have an appropriate skill for that. that, that that's the interesting thing. You... My only relevant skill is remote ops, and I was thinking of, hey, can I try to remotely I'm... pilot the ship to connect? That's not the thing that needs to be done. This is Someone needs to attach a literal physical cable to the ship in oh, the right way. In that case, yeah, sure. Ooh. There we go. Okay, you, okay. you guys can handle them. Just, you know, okay. keep him yeah, talking. Then... Get them to monologue. <laughs> then the chatty cultist can go, Hi, do you have a moment for our Lord and Savior? Cool. Good time on Santa Paula says. Good old, good old Miss Erica Yang throwing out those skills. <laughs> um, you can roll me diplomat or persuade. Anything you think you can use to just spin a couple of circles around his head. Uh, as long where as do you I get him out of the airlock so we don't space him. Uh, okay, I put, have, click, I have you click, you click persuade, and then it opens a little window. Ooh. Set the difficulty mm -hmm. to a routine because he seems to be interested in talking, and then give it a roll. Mm -hmm. I will attempt to persuade him to join Ooh. the truth. Well, in that case, this goes a lot easier, because it is just a relatively easy operation. People at the comms and sensors. Roll me your skills. And let me look up the difficulty have, for you. When you have specialty in a thing, what is that? Um, so, it, it, let's say you have electronic one comms. You also have electronics zero in everything else. So in, in computers and remote ops. It's just that specifically for comms, you have a one. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah, that makes sense. Let me actually look up what the difficulties are for average operations. Um, I think average is eight. Yeah, those are all, they're all pretty average. And routine. Handsome. Area Reynolds rules a one. Lisa Gecko rolls a four. Congratulations. Yeah. Um, in that case, I think, Argus, you get a five on this because you get some pretty good information as you cycle through the airlock and head outside. Um, unfortunately, right, what you're, would be my role? Unfortunately, you're dealing with a big old idiot who is going to need a lot of finger pointing and directions to get the cabling right. <laughs> yes. <sighs> you know, you kind of miss those B-class stations where they have drones to take care of this for you. God dang. <sighs> I do. <laughs> but on the bright side, you could say I already have a drone behind the wheel. <laughs> okay. So Good. this is probably like a mechanic, athletic strength, something in that direction. It's a difficult task, mm. though. So you're going to have to bump the difficulty from average up one. You All have right. a plus and five just... to the roll because your friends are giving you great tips. And there's no captain right. getting in the way of the, of the, the, the audio feed. 
All right, let's try this. Oof. Now, I don't know how bad the guy behind the wheel is panicking on this ship, but he might just think that he landed it himself with how smoothly this goes. Um, the ship is clawed into place. You spend some time with your buddy here. Okay, so you're going to have to find another airlock on the ship or some other ship nearby because the airlock is now occupied. You... <sighs> It's not good, but it's something you can do. Is you can totally just jury-rig an unbiblical together, which is what you have to do to get this thing to work. Uh, the ship is now connected. How did you say it? So that's good. How did you pronounce it? Unbiblical. Are you mispronouncing it on purpose? What is it? It is umbilical. Umbilical, umbilical you know, like uh, from umbilical. the mother to the embryo of a child. I thought no, it was umbilical. I, oh, no, listen. we thought it was just the dude being incompetent. <laughs> <laughs> to be fair... There's a C in there. My brain gets yes. it all mixed up. Umbilical. Umbilical. Yeah. <laughs> it's just English. I've been led to live a life of years. Of biblical proportions. Of umbilical. <laughs> of umbilical proportions. No. Point is the umbilical is connected. And <laughs> a sobbing comms person comes out. <laughs> You can tell, yeah, right. because it was his voice that you heard over the, the the intercom for a moment when he was speaking about an engineer coming by. Um, I don't know if you want to keep this captain busy for much longer, uh, Erica, because he's, like, giving you the eye of, like, I want to talk to this guy and give him, a mouth, uh, give him an earful. Can I, like, try to calm him down so he doesn't murder a boy? You can give me some uh, diplomat. It's a difficult role. This guy's pissed off. He's very angry that this went so poorly. Oh, God. Uh, diplomat role. Show me Is the beans. Average routine. How are we doing? What are we doing? Um, I think it's difficult. That's, like, the next level up, right? Ha, ha, ha. I roll. Wonk. Um... That's a something. <laughs> You should be glad that you landed. You got the ship landed so properly because he just muscles you out of the way. Oop. Well, we tried. At this point, a very tired person who was probably the harbor master, judging by the 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 fancy little uh, rank indicator. You know, they got the the fancy suit. <sighs> all right, all right. What happened here? Why is the first thing that I hear that? <sighs> Oh, man. <sighs> their eyes are blue, as in they are sleepy, and they got those big old bubbles under their eyes. Aww. I get woken up sleepy. by the person manning the station-wide communication system that there's a ship about to crash into here. And I walk over here, and all I see is a captain crashing into his crew. <laughs> well, we we handled it. We did our sure best. Didn't crash. You don't work for me. Who are you? Just some concerned citizens. We just oh. arrived and nearly got crashed into by a ship. Yeah, we just didn't want to die. <laughs> hey, there's people who don't want to die who don't take the effort to land the ship that's about to crash into them. Well, we at least have the skills that, that were helpful. What even brings you to gore? If you're this good at landing ships, you should be working at some A-class. Kissing a noble's boot as you make thousands an hour. God, I wish. We're, we're visiting an old friend. Yeah, we gotta. You go have an friend. old friend on a planet that doesn't have. You're going planet side, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. yeah. Hey, um, can anyone mm -hmm. of you pilot like spacecraft, small craft? Yeah. I guess I can somewhat. Maybe I can do you a favor by letting you fly the shuttle right now, so you don't have to stay up here and endure however long this is going to take. Absolutely. She gestures Absolutely, at we can handle that. She, 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 she makes like these hand gestures at the people behind you who are yell, loudly yelling. She is taking what, we, what we'll call diplomatic steps backwards to take this conversation further away from the loud <laughs> yelling. <laughs> Ooh. And we understand the, the subtle cues. Listen, yeah. I, can, I can get you a free room if you really want to stay until sunrise, but if you want to go down there at night, and smell the fresh air instead of... Well, let's just be clear. I don't get replacement filters as often as I should. I don't know why. I think someone's skimming me out on the deal. <laughs> Point is, I can, get you, I can get you the shuttle keys for a, a brief spell down there. I can take a nap on the I way mean, there, too. Sure. Heck yeah. Seems everybody wins. 
certainly expedite the process. All right. Um, meet me in the shuttle bay in like 30 minutes. I gotta get the maintenance thing off of it. All right, fair enough. 30 minutes is fine for me to find another airlock. At some point, your your big armored guy comes back in with the loud hiss of the of the helmet getting removed. <laughs> There are very few people who can go into a vac suit, spend more than 10 minutes in it, and not look a little disheveled by the end of it. It's like Helmet Hair 2.0. <laughs> Opens up and there's just cigarette smoke just pouring out. <laughs> How did you even get a cigarette in there? The answer, the answer is, you don't want to know. Hot yes. box suit. <laughs> who says you can't be high in space just because there's no gravity? <laughs> Marvelous. What a puff. What a huff. Uh, I presume you bring him up to speed, the good old Arthur. Yeah. Sure. He did a very good job. We sorted the problem. We Double saved the day. Up. We saved the, this crummy station. I mean, Arthur, you, you, you're you pretty sure that the, sta that the station would have been fine. Not in a great shape, but fine, so. But you're a realist. At least as far as I know, Argus. We mm. saved the day. Lucy Station has more than one airlock. They can craft at least three more ships into it. Wait, no, they said five, so four. There's at least an airlock five, but you haven't seen number oh. four yet. <laughs> number five will drive you mad. <laughs> number 15. Okay, unless you want to do something in those 15 minutes. There's 30 minutes. We'll just go straight to the small craft and the way down. I eat a sandwich in the meantime. Haha. -ha. I said you were going to do that. But as you have a sandwich, taking a seat on these authentic imperial plastic chairs. Yeah. You get you get bothered. Well, first and foremost, if you're eating a sandwich from around here. Um So how do I explain this? Gore is a breadbasket. It is a planet that grows a hell of a lot of food and exports it. it would also mean that every single bit of food here is the prefabricated slush that you get. So if you're eating local food. Don't expect it to be great. Even space meals. You know, the stuff that goes in an MRE goes for high prices around here. Oh boy. Here you go, Safi. If you spend like one minute watching after the <sighs> fan stamp, that's exactly the point that I was making. Oh my goodness. Well, great. That'll be something to watch. <sighs> anyway, as you have your little break, there is a lady on the station who notices newcomers. And immediately jumps on over. She... It's a nice looking lady. Introduced herself as Nancy. Who is selling good luck charms to anyone who wants them. Wow. Anyone who How wants them, of course, being anyone. Oh, well, you see, these are authentic charms. Made with beautiful stones and magical bones from the surface side. Oh. I promised my cousin to get some trinkets, so yes. Also yes, because charm's pretty. She charges 100 credits for a fine good luck charm. All right, hold on. Let me account for that. <laughs> how much was, uh, How much did I pay for the coffee? The, for the, the, the big duffel bag was like 500 because it's just a big old duffel bag with some lining. 500 minus the shotgun. Did I get to... Hey, it's fine. Um, and then, let's see. At this rate, you're going to be poor in an hour. I have 40,000, Safi. I don't think your, your bank account likes it either. Uh, I'm sure it doesn't, but it's fine. Your bank account is now an adamant AI structure, and it's very upsetting you're spending. <laughs> That's my spending habit, yes. What would you look at that? It's always nice to see someone who has a little bit of taste and style for a good luck charm. How much for the charms? A hundred? A hundred, yes. It is a very nice charm. It's it's bone, it's got ropes and, and, and twines, and these glittery gemstones and geodes hanging from it. It's a very pretty thing. I mean, Ooh. probably no actual diamonds or gemstones, unless, you know... It's, a, it's entirely mm -hmm. possible. I mean, this is the fun part. A lot of people forget. Earth used to have surface deposits of gemstones and, and iron ore and stuff. So if you go to a new planet, you can totally just find like, oh, this is actually platinum. And I was just kind of sitting on it for a rock. Whoops. Unless um, unless there has already been civilization that has already mined those easily accessible deposits. Yeah. I, I By the way, Dizzy, that is exactly what it is. Yes. Thank you. <laughs> I just love how slurry it looks like. It looks like wet cement, like paper mache. Ugh. It's horrible. It's very, very appetizing. 
<laughs> Excuse me, paper mache. Lest, lest I get my umbiblicals wrong. <laughs> I'm trying to find a, a, an appropriate image for uh, tow cables and umbilicals and whatnot, but the only thing I have, this one little tidbit, and it's only like one second at the start where they detach them. Ew. Wee. Umbiblical. Look at those shooting guns. Pew, pew. Wee. Pew. Um, Nancy but, also gives yeah. you... Gives you a good little, good little tip. That if you're planning to go down to Gore, do be nice to the people with their little superstitions. Mm -hmm. There are simple people trying to make ends meet, and it's been a harsh drought lately. Being being mean to them isn't going to get you anywhere, boys. Does anyone else want to buy a fine good luck charm? Absolutely. Especially if you can also tell us a bit more about the superstitions. Oof. Okay. Just, just what's the what's the common kind? It's 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 the usual stuff you'd expect from from cowboys and a lot like um, gosh, um, what what would be a fun superstition? Like you gotta polish your boots every time you go outside. Like the, the cows will know when your boots are dirty. <laughs> <laughs> okay, never, but that is actually never, uh, to know. Never tie your lasso with your left hand. That kind of weird stuff. Ah, gotcha. That's like the actual fun superstition sort of stuff. Safi, I have exactly the thing you're looking for. I'm going to post it in the... Okay. Yeah, and she does mention that there has been a drought here for almost a decade. Like, dust bowl bad. Let's put it like that. <laughs> New hobby idea. Using phrases that sound like down-home folksy expressions that you learned from your grandma, but are actually just nonsense you made up. That man really salts my melon! You know what they say. It takes a bushel of corn to feed one chicken. A it louse. sure does, bud. A louse will feed on any hand it, lids up, it lands on. Don't put down a salt lick and say you ain't got cows. <laughs> <laughs> like, these are actually pretty good, though. There's a guy who eats half the berries and says the pie shell's too big. Like digging a pole and hoping for ducks. These... Yeah, these, th it, actually... these are actual <laughs> things! At least like, half there's of the, actual the melon salting is... <laughs> No, they so aren't. They... they were made up. It's just that they make sense because, you know, they sound... They yeah, have logical they cause do. and effect. Yeah, yeah, yeah and like, he really melon. salts my melon. Like, who wants salt on their melon? Who wants salt you on don't? their chocolate? Points my finger at everyone around me. Somebody actually made a translation, too. Oh, my God. That. that man really salts my melon. Salt is frequently added to flavors... Uh, Oh my god, so someone who salted your melon. Sorry, doing is you an American thing? Salt? Oh my goodness, it make it more appealing. Oh no. Even though the framing presents it as a negative thing, so maybe you could choose for someone who's annoys you by doing you a favor. Who annoys you by doing you a favor? It, it's called malicious compliance. Even that or like when somebody is right, but you don't want them to be right right now. Okay, so it takes this a bushel of corn. thing is happening to you because you're, yeah, you're, you're doing, going through this because you're irresponsible. Like, I know, but I don't want to hear it right now. Even though it might seem like a small ask, it can add up over time. A single, or can you a small amount of corn a single day? But over time, we need, need to feed lots of corn. A louse will, land on a head, will live on any head that it lands on. Um, everyone can suffer bad times and ill luck regardless of their lot in life. Anyone can suffer from I depression. Mean, that's, ah, oh, that's a great way to look at it. Um, don't I mean, put down a salt lick. The multiple generation. My favorite is that it don't take time fixing problems that you don't have. If you don't have cows, you don't have the problem of cows needing a salt lick. <laughs> don't blame circumstances for the problem of your own creation. Oh my goodness! Don't hope for something. Uh, don't hope something will turn out after one step. Actually, follow through with all of them. Your problem could attract ducks here, but you got to get ducks to live in your pond. Go get ducks. Oh, that's great. Oh my goodness, I love it. Oh. It's that that's probably what makes them so good is that you can make them in actual sayings. Yeah. Anyway, kids. Yeah. These these all track. Nancy yeah. wishes you the best of luck on the surface side. Um but she because you're such a nice guy Arthur by just buying her thing and being so polite to her. And and you know, all of you are actually asking being interested. Um she does give you a little tip about uh there are some Imperial, Imperium soldiers surface side, but if you're going to go anywhere, you're probably going to go by train, and if you take the south end exit, there's usually Gorians there keeping watch. They don't keep they don't keep as tight an eye, so if you want to get something gotcha. something with you, you should go over there. Gotcha. Mm -hmm. Just so you can keep safe, boys. It's very dangerous down on the surface. You got Bulls. cattle thieves, and then you got all those big old monsters. You got to be careful. Man's entitled to a self-defense. Wink. 
Wink. Oh, thank you, Nancy. After scarf scarfing down whatever burger you managed to get your hands on, man. You would kill for some cheap chocolate after this. Ugh. Or some salt. Just anything with flavor. Taffy, I'm literally chewing on a crystal of salt right now. I'm not putting down... Lamp? I'm not putting down the salt lick. What Put is your... the salt lamp. What is your southern phrase? Oh, no. Okay, I'll, 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 I'll use my internet name. I'm cuter than a live armadillo at a rodeo. <laughs> Oh, baby. <laughs> so cute. A little cowboy hat on. Everyone else, Ready come on. Please, part please partake of this. Dizzy, what do you get? You're allowed to use your internet name if you feel more comfortable that way. Uh, it's just my actual name. <gasps> just wow. Louder than collard greens and cowboy boots. <laughs> <laughs> I am I'm dumber than a bale of hay in the washer. Hey, I, that's I mean, a... You would have to be pretty dumb to put a bale ba of hail in the washer. It's gonna be musty. Hikari. Uh, grosser than an iced tea estate fair pageant. <laughs> Como, please. Hold on. I have several ways to spell my name, so I'm gonna have a couple versions. Please. Oh. <laughs> Go Hotter it. than an iced tea in a washing machine. <laughs> what, what, what was this? Okay, and. Uh, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. If I take the oh, actual one. hotter than a burnt steak with a shopping cart. <laughs> <laughs> I love that it's an ice tea in the washing machine or a burnt I steak. I know it's not. It's not going to be very hot, would it? Well, well it depends it's... on the setting of the washing machine. Yeah, and if I sw swap them around, it's kind of interesting. Well, I mean, iced tea with a shopping cart <laughs> or a burnt steak. Uh, hold on, in a washer. Gross. <sighs> All right. Does well, anyone yeah. here have any skill piloting small craft or anything? Yes. I have. I mean, piloting, sure. but not small craft. Yeah. Got okay. I have pilot pilot. one. Good news. I have piloting spacecraft specifically. Small craft is somebody else. Mm -hmm. Well, if you have pilot, you can do small craft. You're just not good at. It. Good news, everyone. It's not too hard to land a small spacecraft. Uh, but unless you have particular yeah. experience with it, doing even a routine space-to-surface operation might be a little bit of a, mm, I don't know what to do. And then you waggle oh, your oh. hands at the air going, I don't know what to do. Have astrogation, I can help. So we don't, like, bounce off the atmosphere to too No, steep no, astrogation is not necessary for something like this. Like, it's obvious where you're supposed to go. The whole thing is a flight plan on the computer. Okay, fair enough. Well, it still would be piloting, but my knowledge is mostly for larger ships. So... Allow me to explain a thing you can do in the system. It's called taking your damn time. Ooh. When you are taking, when you are doing a task, you can opt to take your damn time. In that case, you will lower the difficulty by one, which is effectively you gain a plus two on the roll. But the operation takes about ten times as much time. Normally, Jesus. a landing is a plus six and up check, and it takes one d six plus ten times ten seconds, so it can take up to a minute. Or you can take a couple of minutes, but it's a lot easier to do. I assume what happens is we just miss our window for the first time. Yeah, you're, you're taking your sweet time, making all kinds of micro-adjustments. So you can do that if you want to. Damn, that actually does sound nice. Yeah, you can always take your time as long as there's no major risk. And it's assumed that most checks you succeed at all the time unless there's a risk involved. Which I like that this system is actually like straight up, hey, don't do it unless someone's going to die, something bad's going to happen, or shit's bad. Yeah, I mean, we're not in a rush, and there's no risk. It's just working. Also, um, just for quick reference, let me give you the task difficulty table. I love that it's very hey. difficult, and then it's formidable. Uh, here's the effect results mm -hmm. table, which is like, what happens when you f fuck it up? And finally, also kind of important, is the time frable. Fra oh, oh, excuse frable. me. I forgot, I was a little bit off as to how task chains work, but I still like how it works. I think it's a hell of a lot better than the the help and aid actions in <laughs> Pathfinder and 5e, at the very least. <laughs> it's a bit more concrete. Hmm. Anyway, there's also a thing called boons and banes, where you roll with advantage or disadvantage, add an extra d6, and take the highest or lowest, depending on the boon or bane. So that's nice. Just, just some quick things to think about. So, who's going to land this craft, and are they going to take a little extra time just to be safe? I will pilot. Yeah. And, uh, oh. No. By the way, 
you can totally also go faster. You take a minus two, as in you make it one difficulty harder, but you do it in in significantly less time. I... No, I, not just... not for now. I'm just saying for future reference. If you ever yes. really need to do something in a rush, <laughs> just can't just slam it straight into the ground. Um, oh, this no. thing is a small craft, so go for it. I I will choose not to. I will. I'm not going to take it easy. It's just going to be a wait. It's a routine, so it's a six and up check, or a four and up check if you take your time. Actually, I'm not feeling very lucky. I'm going to take my time. Snake there. eyes, baby. Uh, what would actually be the modifier for piloting? Uh, with zero. Dexterity uh, no. or dexterity, no, sure. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, okay. I guess dex makes sense. I was very lucky. Sweet <laughs> fucking Jesus. <laughs> Ten effects. You succeed in an elegant fashion. That is a I mean you take your time, but most of it's spent like hanging over the place. And then you just swoop in and land. Marvelous. Making your landing, or on your way down. You see the planet come ever closer. Features become more readily apparent. Which is to say, welcome to bonus game. No. Once your ship gets close to the, to the surface, the modest downport becomes visible. It is all it needs to fix a ship in atmosphere is in on the ground. And there are plenty of cargo haulers that land and take off. Now, this is to say that not every ship goes to the space station. You can just hang around the planet and be like, hey, cargo hauler, bring shit to my ship. The local staff seems excessively busy, which is to say, once you get close enough, it's like, oh my goodness, those people look like they're breaking a sweat every moment. Um, okay. So, the person you're with, the lady, knows the the, the, the repertoire, like the normal thing that they say when they bring someone surface side. Well, we're coming mm -hmm. in on the, the Gord downport. Uh, please do remember that they have a law level 7. They, outside, the, I think they're okay with people carrying guns and stuff. Just don't wave them around in people's faces, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, law level 7, by the way, is no grenades, no nukes, no rockets. Nothing bigger than a shotgun. Unless you think you can get past... Although I think the security's only at the gates outside. It's very weird around here. That's what you get in these backwater planets. Inconsistent law application. And I'll, I'll keep mine in my bag. I mean, to be fair, these guys are enough cattle thieves. <laughs> they don't want them to get armed with plasma rifles on top of everything else. And if you do want a bigger gun, um, I think he always makes the joke of, like, join the Imperial Navy today. But hey, so conceal carry be... only. Don't walk around in battle dress. Don't try to intimidate. I think there's some imperial guys down there, and they don't take too kindly. They're pretty bored, so don't give them a reason. And uh, good yeah. luck on whatever you're trying to do here. Uh, mm -hmm. Hopefully, I'll see you alive and well later, or not. I mean, to be fair, I'm not exactly out of my office all that often. Well, that is fair. Yeah. Once your ship lands, it's. If you've ever seen like a small airport where it's like this is a flat section of land you can land your ship on or your your plane and over there's like the building where you're supposed to go and there's a fence around the whole section that's what it's like. Mm -hmm. It's pretty straightforward. There is the whole of course uh, going like oh hello we're making a landing and they're like oh you're making a landing we'll land over there that's where the the downport ship lands. Why are you here by the way? Uh, I thought you guys were like uh such guys were uh, doing maintenance at this time of day it's like almost evening. Think you guys were not saying not some not flying in the dark. <laughs> Come in. Oh, what should we tell him? Uh, I mean, I suppose we could say we're delivering a VIP because we have an official from the station. Yeah, I guess that yeah. works. Got an emergency at home or something? Somebody got sick. We don't know the details. Well, yeah, uh, I mean, good, good, there's good. always yeah, there's always like the simple truth if we do get called out, which is that we are trying to see an old bud. Okay, gotcha, 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 gotcha. Um, just make your landing and, uh... Well, uh, good luck to it. Your ship lands. Smooth landing, thanks to that buttery smooth 10 effect. Yes. You make your way to the planet. You like it better. Oh, it's been a while since you had fresh air. Guess what? Jumps, as in between stars, take, uh, quite a few days. They can take two weeks or so-ish. So, it's been a while since you've had some fresh air. Gore is exactly... Well, the, the downport is exactly what you'd expect. It's very fancy sci-fi buildings plonked right on top of a bunch of grass and dirt. 
there are some yeah. there are some things that resemble roads, but it's pretty minimalistic. It's very clear that they're just making do. And beyond a fenced off area, outside of the fenced off area that makes it the landing pad, is buildings that are clearly of a lower tech level. Some of them have like it's it's an old Western building, but it's got this big satellite dish on top, and others have these fancy light arrays. <laughs> And then you know, even further, you see smokestacks coming from, from trains that go back and forth. It's pretty lively for how small it is. And mm. technologically dissonant. Dissonant. Mm -hmm. Well, to be, yeah. like I said, you can, you can see even from here, like through two fences, you can see buildings mm. of a way lower tech level decked out in fancy toys that they bought. Hmm. Gotcha. So it's like having a little cottage house with a, you know, satellite dish. With a massive set. Yeah. Listen, I'm going to show you the picture that's in the book because it really does communicate this idea perfectly. <laughs> See if sure. I can find it. Go ahead. Also, I got into conversation on Twitter with someone like years ago about exactly such a thing. I'm going to try and find it. Here you go. This is, this is what you're supposed to imagine right now. Nice. Exactly. Oh, that's amazing. <laughs> oh, I love that aesthetic. So I got an old rotting building and next to it is like this fancy fridge vend vending machine. <laughs> Yes. Guys, really one thing and it's disgusting. But what is it? Oh no, it's a nice house on the farm. Yeah, and then I posted this at it. <laughs> Giant satellite dish. I gotta watch my Sunday games. <laughs> I wanna play the Fortnite with zero ping. Can't troll no people on the internet Fortnite? from a house in the middle of nowhere. You can you can send me all the porn you want. No mailman comes here, bucko. Yes. I know the UPS guy personally. I am the UPS guy. <laughs> I'm the one who delivers. Yes. They airdrop the packages on my house. Well, you're on the planet size. It's late at night. There's plenty of street lights around. The person you were with who was taking the planet size is like, I'm going to go get a nap and I'll go back to the... My office. All right, I'm gonna inform them that of what we told to the uh, radio guy. So essentially, hey, some sort of kind of emergency. We don't know the details. So you know, if we lie, we lie the same way. <clears throat> At least we're consistent. Oh. Yeah. Oh. Okay. Got you. Doug. Oh well. Uh, good luck with that. <laughs> they are very tired. They could use that cup of coffee, but for different reasons than that bum at the hotel, who's probably confused about where you are right now. Although, in his current state, he probably doesn't even care. Go nap, bud. Yeah. Well, you're planet side, and oh boy. That air. Um, as you were approaching, you could tell that the local area is pretty much just rolling hills. Relatively smooth hills, older ones. Older mountains that have eroded down. Set mostly with grass. Oh. There are foresty areas or lakes that have gathered in between those hills. So Australia almost? Because they also have very, very old mountains to the point that they've no more than just hills. There is one thing that catches your eye, which is there are distinct areas where there are massive patches of yellowed grass, like uh, dehydrated drought. Mm. Don't eat the yellow grass. The second. <laughs> well... Where is our bud? <laughs> I appreciate it. Um, already in rack and gold. So you need to find the train that goes there. Mm. Right, and we were told to go for the left gate specifically. Yeah. The south gate, if you wanted to smuggle something with yeah. you. Which, I mean, y'all are. If you go through the south gate, as long as you're not carrying something that's auspiciously visible as a large gun, you can just go through. That, and plus we can also hear some locals and see what's popping. Yes. Yeah. Um, by the way, the, the, the security fence where they perform the scans is specifically the section where the downport, the high-tech section, goes into, this is just the planet now. Sit on the country with metal and steel. Did somebody drop out? Yeah, just rain. Hello? They're back, I... baby. Hello? Yeah, I got, I got Yote. No! What did I miss? You got a coyote. <laughs> Missed yep. like half a sentence. <laughs> well, what? What was it? I, I sorely miss it. Gotta have to watch the replay. Well, as I mentioned, what? though, mm -hmm. there are a few train stations that surround uh, the the 
you can call them the slums because of how technologically disparate they are, but it's like the yeah. the things the locals built around it. Mm-hmm. Uh, you do have instructions on which train to take. Unfortunately, yes. the train station in question is... Um, well, the train is there, but there's no conductor or anyone. Probably because it's a little late. Is there a schedule? <laughs> On you, the building. You heroically step up to the building, take a look at the schedule, and it's empty. Like someone cleared it off and did not fill in any new details. Mm. There's like a little train. footnote that's like, uh, ask the conductor. Who isn't here? Okay. Uh, can we go into check. the like little transition building? If there is one? Like into the building itself? Sure. Yeah. No because like there's right usually, there. yeah, but I mean there's uh, usually people, at least manning the little. Um, the they door... didn't man the space station. What do you think they were gonna man this one? <laughs> well, the door is locked, check. but. Hmm. Yeah, okay, Doug. In that case, I'm just gonna knock. Or look for a bell if they actually have a bell. Nope, she's just knocking. Eventually, right. a person comes up. They have a a fat cigar in their hmm. mouth. They look like they're ready to, to, go, to go places. So, uh, who the hell are you? It's a fine, um, underwhelming lady standing in front of you. I'm going to introduce ourselves, our party. And I'm going to say that this is our destination. We need a train ride. When can we realistically expect to actually be able to be in time for the trip? So we don't, like, wake up in the middle of the night like we do right now. <sighs> Let me just look this up real fast. Well, um, well, uh, I got some uh, slight uh, disappointment for you. Um, I ain't exactly in the, well, in the mood to leave anytime soon. I mean, I got a bunch of people out of waiting, but I, I, you know, I gotta wait until the train's full. No need to take a twenty-four hour journey without a full train. So, uh, you ain't a full train. That makes sense. That makes sense. How long? expect to wait for that uh, a couple of weeks maybe a couple of months mm. not a lot Fair of people enough. go to rock and roll well cattle does but there are no cattle here to take there so <laughs> well i suppose our chances here are either trying to persuade the people to show up or just buying out a couple train cars um you're technically speaking the person employing you is paying for your travel expenses they probably won't cover that part <laughs> no i understand uh, i meant out of pocket that sounds very expensive. That is. That's why I'm saying there's other ways to do it. Yeah. I, I kind of step forward to the guy and ask, are there any other ways to get there other than just the train? There's not a lot of cars here that can go 800 kilometers before they run out of fuel. Or batteries or whatever you think guys like to use. Hmm. <laughs> well, maybe there is something you can do for me. Wouldn't recommend doing it now, though, unless you're a, a thief in sorts. See, uh... No. M- my boss from the good old railway company, Al Rack and Gold, uh, ordered some irrigation project parts. Big price. Off-world. Mm-hmm. And, uh, best I could hear, whoever was running the warehouse lost the damn parts. Mm. Best I could tell, he didn't lose those damn parts. He's just too damn lazy to fix that computer machine and find them. Hmm. Well, so if you can get me that box of parts, space. I'll round up the remaining people and we can get going in the morning. Or whenever you fix it. Alright, fair enough. How well rested are we after the trip, by the way? I mean, unless you were the pilot, you probably had a good uh, time to sit around for an hour or so on the way down. Alright, fair enough. No, what I meant is, like, has it been, like, two days since we last slept, or... It would just wake up, go to the station, do the thing, and shuttle down. You can say, <laughs> but you can you can go with whatever you like. All right, oh. fair enough. Uh, I suppose Space we man. can we can help them, then get some rest, and then go in the morning. Uh, you are yeah. provided directions on what warehouse is like the offending building. All right, let's go and check that computer then. Heading on over to the warehouse, unless anyone else has anything else to say. Interjections. You yeah, guys cool with that? Yeah. Straightforward. Yeah. yeah, we can just like try to fix the computer or like look it up manually. You find yourself in front of a big. Sure so. Fancy equipment lets you build what's called fusion-sealed buildings, which are, they look like blocks made, like big metal bricks 
made out of a single chunk of metal, but in truth, he just welded them back together mm. with a fancy fashion. So, uh, it's closed. Like, the little, little help desk in front is like, I'm closed! Mm. Uh, it's a big building, though. Could store a lot of goods. Probably has an underground section, too. They usually have, considering its foundation sticks into the ground. Hmm. Does that have any sort of schedule? Uh, yep. Tomorrow at, like, 8 to 9. It doesn't even give you a specific time. But yeah. In the morning, somewhere, they're going to come back. All mm -hmm. right. Fair enough. I don't want to break and enter on the first yeah. day in the city. Is it really breaking entry if you're picking something up that you already own? Yeah, well, you literally have to break. It's, st it's still illegal break. to break in. <laughs> it's just not theft. It's it, it. Hold on. Here, here's a great reaction image to that. Is it really a crime <laughs> if I resurrect the person after I kill them? Uh, uh? I bring them back as undead. It's an upgrade. Here we go. There. Cool motive. Still murder. <laughs> I dig it. Neither is that, but toy. Like they're gonna be opening it up in a why? No, in that case we can show up in the morning. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. I mean, in the meantime we can like see what's up in the town, explore, get some food that isn't you know cement. There is good food here. It still goes at a pretty good yeah. price, but it's better than the space station. After all, mm -hmm. they're already trying to make their sales here, so it's like, ooh. But get some fresh rack and gold bread, nice and creamy with the fresh milk of the area. You know, the fun stuff. Ooh, ooh. Gorian toast. French toast. Well, so yes, yeah, so you can buy fancy cool. stuff here. They probably also well, grow not... taters. At, at least it's not giant, giant alien omelets. So point is, you can, you can wage the night away. If you want to sleep, the, well, there's a Traveler's Aid Society building down here, probably, or a place you can stay. That's nothing too massive to worry about. People who are hospitable. You could probably stay at a stranger's house if you absolutely needed to. But in return, you got to tell them stories. Well, we can do that. This is the part where I turn to the camera, and I and because I watched a YouTube video on this once, I'm going to be like, did you know that back in yesteryear, inns weren't all that common, and people tend to stay with strangers because, you know people weren't suspect little bastards because of capitalism. Did you know that the increase of property is the main reason that people have started distrusting each other? It's kind of a weird thing when you think about it. Yeah. Now that you own shit, you don't want that shit to get stolen, so you don't trust people because they might try to take your shit because they're people you don't know. Plus, is... owning shit uh, in in a capitalist way just prevents other people from owning shit they need to it's, live. It's one so of those... it gives them more yeah. reason to steal. There's, it's a circle. It's box. it's such a weird fucking thing. Like, why would you want to own stuff if it means that you live a worse life? You're, like, this is what people mean when they say stuff owns you. Mm -hmm. Your life has become circular. Anyway, point is, you make it to morning without any hassle. Don't worry. You can navigate. How much does it cost? Nothing. It's it's mo you okay. probably stay at like a stranger person's house and they're like, oh how lovely, some nice offworlds. Look at this silly clothes. Look at this one. He looks like he's made of metal. Are you a building boy? <laughs> yes. Uh, well, what do you do? Are you a hospital? Mm, not quite, no. Not my area of expertise. Oh. Oh, well. I guess it makes sense that a hospital wouldn't be made of metal. That sounds very cold. Yes. You sound like <laughs> the opposite of a hospital, though. Like, instead much... of healing, you injure. Did you I'm just glad that this is a nice backwater town with nice backwater traditions like hey. suddenly stopping conversations with the outsider, looking for the blinds at the outsider. <laughs> hey, by the way, did you know that the reason hospitals are called hospitals is because they were actual hospitable places where the sick could stay during the night? And over yeah, time, it evolved into a into an actual like medical s care. <laughs> this is where I wave my hands and go, man, a pharmacy, yes! <laughs> How you good are your How good are your my... services? And he pulls out a big gun. <laughs> all of my, all of my clerics are pharmacists. <laughs> I've never had a complaint. They are all dead. Uh, like I'm a cure your, uh, like you exercise with a gun. I'm gonna cure a headache yes, with I'm a gun. I'm here to exercise your criminals. <laughs> yeah. There is a game Ex that is about an exorcist, uh, who it's like typing of the dead, except you type stuff in Latin. 
It's great. The music oh, yes, is. the new one. Yeah, I saw that. It's so great. <laughs> <clears throat> you are standing outside of the warehouse. A chubby little man sits in front of the window. He's wearing a rather colorful Hawaiian shirt and seems to be relaxing. Uh, we're, I'm going to, if nobody else is going to do it, I'm going to approach him. I'm going to tell him that we are looking for the parts specifically for uh, the person at the train station. Uh, just so that you they have... said you might. Her, her name was Bell Curtis. In case you want to be. Bell Curtis. I'm going to introduce ourselves. I'm going to say that Bell Curtis is looking for some parts, and they said you might have had some problem with your computer. There's no problems with my computer. And you can tell about that just because she sends someone else over that doesn't magically make those things reappear. I tell you, I don't have them. My computer's working just well, fine. where did they go? Ugh. Listen, I am an, an expert programmer. I know how to make the computer work good. It works good. That sounds suspect, but I'll trust him on that. In that case, can you please at least pinpoint where the parts could be? I don't have any idea. The computer takes care of all the automated storage solutions. You know, uh, black box technology. I don't know what it does or where it puts things. It has a logical oh, system told... for things. But you did just tell us that you're an expert programmer. How can you not know what the, part, what the program does? This is the part where the actual programmer, me, goes, uh, people have no fucking clue how most AIs tend to work. They can visualize yes, it as exactly. best they can, but... Safi. Safi, my thesis at the university was writing a really basic AI program, and I have no idea how it works. <laughs> now, the thing is, that's a fancy AI that tries to play video games. This guy has a storage computer. <laughs> that's exactly what I did. You punch in certain criteria or select them from a drop-down menu, but it didn't have enough the time or money, wink, to put it in, which is what I said to the commission that was checking my thesis. Uh, and, and it gives you results based on that. It's like, oh, hey, here's a medicine that you know, helps with this particular illness, but it, you know, ruins your liver, so don't give it to people who have liver problems. You know, that mm -hmm. sort of stuff. Fascinating shit. I still have no idea how it works. I still have no idea how I passed it. I failed the presentation <laughs> part entirely because I just completely fumbled and I had terrible, you know, performance anxiety and like, you know, stage fright. And so they said, okay, mm -hmm. fine. How about we just ask you some question? And they flipped for the thing and they started asking questions. But because I wrote the whole thing, I just said, oh, uh, the answer to that is on page 74. <laughs> like I had all of their questions oh, answered in advance. So they just said, fine, you get an I minus. <laughs> master's degree, fuck you. Get out of here. <laughs> get out of here. Yeah. Ah, you filthy animal. Filthy animal, yes. All right, anyway. Um, so obviously, paper, this guy is suspect. He that. doesn't want to say that he he's either incompetent or he's competent. And he just doesn't know how this works. Uh, point he is might still need help. He doesn't want help. He 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 seems to be an arrogant little man. He's like, I got this all solved. It works just fine. Well, I'm sure you have problems stacking up on top of just the parts. But uh, could you please remind me again the name? I keep forgetting. Uh, Bell Curtis. Bell oh, Bell Curtis. More than just the Bell Curtis's parts. And before it gets out of hand, how about you know we try and lend you a hand, you know, on the hush hush, and you'll be like, oh, you know, you're a competent leader of the cell or whatever. You know, basically play up to his ego. Ooh. Arthur, um... Can you give me some diplomat? Sure, absolutely. Make it a difficult one. Don't roll it with strength, roll it with your intellect. You're trying to give me a <laughs> Diplomat with a strength, it's like I pick him up, it's like, <laughs> Listen here, little man. You are small! <laughs> I am huge! Yes. Little baby man. I got exactly 10. Little baby man. Um, in that case, you succeed, but with a cost. Hmm. What would an appropriate cost be in this context? I actually wouldn't know. What he could say is like, hey, it's an expensive system. You're literally pulling away uh, uh, computational time from the thing. You'll have to pay up for it or compensate for something or do something else. I don't know. Shovel oh, some shit. I got a better one. You find yeah. it, but you have to pay for the backlog of, oh, that thing was stored here. You have to pay me for the storage time. Oh, my gosh. How long has it been here? A couple of months. 20, 27 years. Okay, how much would that be? Um, since you're not a merchant, the price is pretty exorbitant. It's like, ooh. Okay, so it's been out two months, right? It's a 2,000? How much space does this stuff take? Yeah, how much space does that take? And I would like to ask the rest of the party also to chip in for this. 
Yeah, I can chip in. So now that you've paid oh, your dues, sure. he does let you inside. And, mm -hmm. oh boy, you better be careful. There's a big robot arm that moves around and picks things up. And probably can crush oh your God. head like a walnut. Unfortunately, I look like a box. <laughs> oh no. Your greatest weakness. Yes, oh, exactly. No, you, you will, go. Once it detects me, it will suddenly experience maternal instincts and it will not let me go. <laughs> like a mother hen. Yeah, he's going to pick me up and is going to put me with all the other boxes that it takes care of. <laughs> um, all right. <laughs> Someone here has to roll reconnaissance to see if they can find out what's going on. Uh, or you can all roll reconnaissance one. in a big task yeah. chain. Yay. Sure. Uh, since it's had, blah, 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 hand, hand, arm, would engineering remote ops be... The arm is not really relevant control. for the situation. It's reconnaissance using right. your endurance, by the way, because it's a bit of a long look through all these boxes, and you have to go up several uh, stairs because of the, the height. I do not have how? the skill, but how can I help? Um, if you don't how do we do this, though? So, when you want to use something other than what you already have, uh, you click... You click Recon, and then you click Modifier, and instead of the normal, you use a different one. Wow. Also, which roll difficulty is this? Beanst. Oh, no. Beanst? So I'm going to tell you all about something that I want to have for this particular game, which is, it's essentially like Hero Points and Inspiration. Once per game, once per session at least, you can say, I want to roll with Advantage, and you get you get to roll an extra D6 and replace your lowest result with it. <laughs> So, they, a different one. <laughs> yeah. so if you want to, you can do that. Otherwise, our, our friendly Erica lady still gets to give it a go. Yeah, so is it average or something else? So, uh, yeah, it's average. It's You're just trying to find a box. It's just kind of exhausting to do this. Even, with, even with Lisa kind of getting in your way. <laughs> Probably because she doesn't like how many stairs there are. Ugh, why is this place so deep? The Texorcist. Great. Oh my god, look at that lizard just shooting the gun. <laughs> <laughs> the oh magic god. lizard. <laughs> you manage to find a... Oh man, this thing's... Um, it is a 2x2x2 two by two by two meter crate. Which is to say that it's taller and wider and deeper than most of you are tall. Uh, in, for for anyone here who, who prefers feats for some reason, uh, this is this is like seven eight feet I think. In all dimensions, it's a pretty big box. Mm -hmm. uh, you find out what the problem is too. Yeah. The identification label that the machine uses has some spots came on it because a box above it is leaking. So some motor oil has covered up the reflective thing that it uses to identify things. So it's like, oh, this thing is full, but also empty? Mm. Hmm. So it basically it found the wrong box for us, or...? So what you think happened is that this emblem got covered up. The machine tried to find it when it was asked to find it. It, it was like, oh, the box is here, but it's not here because I can't read this. So there's something here, mm. but it's not that. Oh. So, okay, I don't have it. It's out of my inventory. But this place is still occupied, so it didn't try to put anything else here. All right, makes sense. Hmm. Point is, if you clean that up, it should be able to find it and bring it back out. All right. In my case, I'll just swipe the uh, label. Scrub, scrub, scrub. A little scrubbing later, and about ten minutes, you stand outside with the large crate mounted on a little hover pad that lets you move <laughs> it around without needing to be mega strong. <laughs> makes sense. Uh, I think... Arthur here has training in athletics, and I think some other people here have some big yes. muscles. So you can you can you can push this thing around without too much hassle. He's sure. also like, oh man, really? You're you're. Do you explain the situation to him, by the way? Uh, yeah, I'm going to say, hey, it, if this problem persists in the future, check the labels because some stuff might, you know, God, some gunk can accumulate on them. And the I spent tens to of thousands on this stupid thing to do that automatically. And now you're no, telling me I have to do does. manual maintenance? Ugh. It does it automatically. It's just that one of your containers is leaked. So mm. maybe put that container at the bottom next time. Guess that's why that other guy complained. Mm. Ah, maybe go. get a space Roomba. Go before I charge you extra for inconveniences you've caused with your stupid box. Well, thumbs up. Let's push it all the way back to Thank the train station. Thank you for your station. assistance. Uh, when you arrive back at the old train station. I would like to paint the mental, mental image, by the way. There is a wooden building 
good old Western style train station with a with a contemporary for Western times, but fancy looking train next to it with a bunch of cattle cars and two like passenger cars, and you are pushing up to it a gr a hovering crate of sci-fi materials. <laughs> The dissonance makes it look like an incompetent movie. You, you you experience that if you go to a backwater village in a modern car with a yep. GPS. <laughs> and then you crash into a car. Would you take a, into a cow? Would you take a look at that? You got me what I needed. How did you do that? There was some gunk on the label. The computer was fine. Yeah, sure. You keep your techno babble to yourself. Um, can you load that up on the back <laughs> cargo for me? Yes. Absolutely, ma'am. I'll go tell the other passengers that apparently we're ready to leave. Okay. Well, yeah. Welcome to the Downport Rack and Goal Line. We're going to be going 800 kilometers at about 30 to 40 per hour, so uh, expect this to take a day or two. Yes. Mostly a day, but... You load the so thing... So it's actually like steam locomotive, right? Or Yep, it's a steam locomotive. Is it one of those fancy ones from the, like... Intermediary stage. Where I mean, they were tech level three. It probably is pretty fancy. Fancy, yeah. It's got aerodynamics to some extent. <laughs> oh, wow. Also, about twelve empty cattle cars that could probably also be loaded with like food and stuff if you needed to. Then you load up the cargo section with this big box. First, you turn off the hover very slowly, not to get your toes stuck, and you strap it in. There's also some luggage here. As you get on top of the train, you notice that there are a couple other people with you. First off, Belle comes with you. Uh, she is the conductor and also seems to be the person operating the train. There are two people who seem to be the stewards, judging by their fancy suits. There are two big, beefy men who got guns and look like they're security, judging by the little chef star. And finally, there are five passengers. Uh, four of them are human. One looks like a fancy lady in a fancy dress. With a, with a one of those big suitcases, you know, of like, I'm very important. I need to bring my whole closet with me wherever I go. <laughs> Uh, the other one is a far more the, the other one is a far more practical lady who has a skirt of practical length, but still looks like she could kick butt. You know, she got the boots. Nice. And the other Heck are, yeah, are two gentlemen with with suitcases that look pretty high end. They got fancy like military spray paint on it. <laughs> nice. And finally, there is a uh, a very big bug man who honestly wouldn't look out of place in a garage filled with tanks. Mm. Now. When they say the military guys, or at least the camo and whatnot, are these the Imperials that we were warned about, or is it somebody else just, you know, hunters in khaki? These are locals. They're probably not with the Imperium because they don't wear the right armor, and you're pretty sure the Imperium has no reason to go outside of the downport. Makes sense. Because, you know, Gore is very independent, so it's kind of hard for them to just muscle in there. Yes. So yes, you can mount and the train. And since, and since they're playing along most of the time, probably there is no reason to enforce anything. Mm-hmm. Well, right, fair make, enough. make your way on yonder train yonderly. And then, yes. how about next time you guys arrive in rock and goal? Or maybe something happens on the train. Something always happens on the train. It's a legal I mean, It's a slow going train. I actually, the first thing that I thought is that when they said that we're going to be going slow for 800 miles, is that we're going to have a stick up. <laughs> it would be the classic Western thing to happen. Argus, Argus, Argus. Yeah. I'm train, honestly though. excited for it. Yeehaw. Yeehaw! Right. There's no way to lose with a stick up on a train. Oh my god, Argus, that's, 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 that's the that's source the... for this picture! Yeah, yeah that's literally wow. the picture. It's not necessarily the same one, but they did use it as a reference. Yeah, that's why, that's why I posted it. Over the side. Yeah. Because drawing all that shit is kind of a hassle. Yeah. If you want to look at more pictures like that, just straight up look up Art Deco uh, trains. Art Deco trains? Hell yeah. Ooh. Yeah. They all look fancy like that. Damn! Art Deco would do that. Damn, they look cool. Some of them look dangerous and scary. Yes. It's anyway, funkiness. that's it for now. Next time, Snago can join in. Yeah. Heck yeah. What a nerd. <laughs>